Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Gin House Shark Pen. Um, I make enough money to buy two of these, so I figured I'd go ahead and buy two of them for review. So we'll go ahead and get into it. Um, these are more aimed towards children, I believe, um, just because of the design and things like that, and a few other um, concessions they made with the pen. We'll go over those a little bit more in the detail, but just keep that in mind while you're watching this review. On to the size comparison. So here it is against the Pilot Penmanship, the Pilot Kukuno, and the Lamy Safari. Now these are all in the beginner pen range. Um, the Pilot Penmanship generally isn't mentioned, but I didn't think I could do this without mentioning it, you know, in comparison, because they do share a lot of similar elements. While the Gen House is certainly not a copy of this pen, I believe it took some design cues from it. Um, very, very similar section, sort of similar, you know, drop off here, which you'll see in the uncapped. Uh, just little things like that that I, I thought it would be nice to include in this comparison, you know. And then we have the Pilot Kukuno. This is uh, another children's pen, and Lamy Safari is kind of entry level. So you can see it's actually longer than every single one of these. Capped, this is a very long pen. Now with the pen uncapped, you can see it comes a little bit closer to the Kukuno slash Safari size. It's definitely shorter than the penmanship, and it kind of stays consistent in the same size throughout, including the posting, so I won't put that in here. Alright, on to what I like about the pen. So first thing up is going to actually be the section. Some people will not like this. Some people love it. I think for a beginner writer, it's a very, very good section, because like the Safari and like the Pilot penmanship, it has a slot for your, um, your pointer finger, your thumb, and your middle finger just on the bottom. So it gives you that pen grip, um, and it slims down towards the middle, so if you like thinner grips, you can get down here. If you like thicker grips, you can kind of go up or, or back, depending on how you hold the pen. But I think it offers, you know, a fair amount of diversity in a small grip section, and it's it's fairly long as well. So you're not, you don't feel like you have to grip it up super, super far, which is nice because there's a big step off here that some people may find uncomfortable. Um, if you hold it up here, it's probably not going to be very nice to write with. But holding it back here, it's, it's very, very pleasant. I like the section quite a bit. The size is really good as well. So everyone saw, the, you know, when it's closed, it's a very, very long pen. But once you uncap it, it's actually a, a very, very pleasant size. Um, you can also post it. It does post fairly deeply, and it's, it's still, a, you know, relatively compact, decent size. It posts about halfway up the shark's head, if that matters to you at all. I generally don't use pens posted, and no different with this one. I generally just use it like this. The design is a bit unique. They, again, probably took some cues from the Pilot Penmanship, but it's it's still a very, very different design. It has that same kind of um, wider head with a blunt tail, kind of tapers off. Same section, but the cap is much larger than the penmanship, and they took that and designed a shark around it. So you can see the shark's gills and eyes, there's a little mouth, and a fin. They also managed very stealthily to put in the Jin Hao branding right here with their little carriage logo thing. But the design overall is very appealing, I think, um, especially if you're younger. They offer this in a ton of colors, so your kid's favorite color if you're wanting to get them into fountain pens or any other child, you know, niece, nephew, whatever. Get their get this in their favorite color, and I'm, I'm sure they'll be that much more inclined to write with it because it's a shark pen. It's really really cool. The price on this is what really really does it for me though. Um, if I liked this pen, the price would be amazing. Um, I don't spoiler, but we'll get to that. But the price, I picked up two of these, and there's like a little coupon involved if you bought more than one from the seller. I got them each for under eighty cents. So it was like a dollar sixty-ish, dollar fifty-ish for two pens. It's pretty good. So that's that's something. And it does come with a converter for that price as well, which is massive. So you do get a standard international converter. And Jinhao, you know, their converters are decent. I've never had any issues with them. On to the neutral. First thing is going to be the weight. So these pens are very, very light, which is good and bad. I think for children, it's fantastic. You know, really long writing periods, 
which children don't, don't generally do, you know, essays and things like that, but this will be just fine for consistent everyday use. It's super, super light, weighs almost nothing, and it'll be very easy to, you know, to carry around with you. I'm not a huge fan of super, super light pens, but this one isn't terrible. It's balanced very well. I think the uh, converter adds a little bit of weight back here, and um, everything everything balances out pretty well. The, the balance point is, let's see, about there. See, that's pretty good. Very, very nice in the hand. Uh, I wish it were a little heavier, but that's just me. I can understand why they wanted to make it very lightweight, though. The nib is okay, and that's about as good as it's going to get. Um, when it works, it's somewhat smooth. They do only offer this in a fine nib, though, so keep that in mind. So your choice is going to be very limited, especially compared to your other beginner pens, which generally offer a bit more variety. But again, for the price, you can't really complain about it. It's Gen Hal's regular nib. Um, I've had some issues with it, but we'll get to that. But the nib itself is just fine. A little scratchy out the box, but it's not too bad, and it's about standard for a, for a fine nib. Build quality is okay. Um, it's very, very good for a 79 80 cent pen, but um, for a children's pen, it has to be because these are going to be thrown, away, thrown around and, you know, may break. Uh, where I actually see that's breaking the most is going to be right here. Um, I can feel some flex when I bend it, and this part here looks fairly thin. Last thing in the neutral is the fact that there's no clip. Um, there is a roll stopper in the shape of, you know, a fin, which adds to the design, certainly, and I think it would have been very difficult for them to do a clip like this, but I think it will make it a little bit harder um, for someone to keep hold of, especially a, um, a kid, just because you can't really put it in that many conventional pin cases very easily because this fin sticks out a fair bit. Um, I found in a lot of my cases it just, it hooks and it doesn't, you know, I, you kind of have to turn it to the side if there's enough room. There should be, but it, it's not my favorite thing. But it is functional as a roll stop. It works very, very well for that. On to the dislike. So, normally I would say something this cheap and this well, you know, made, if it, relatively speaking for the price, would be a fantastic starter pen. But it's not. And that's because... The flow on the nib is horrendous. The reliability of this pen is horrendous. Now, I've I've tried tuning this one a little bit. It writes, you know, relatively reliably now. It still has some skips. This one skips consistently. I, I went ahead and tuned one. I didn't want to tune the other. I just wanted to see how they worked over time. And to be honest, even tuned, I, I hate using these pens. They just don't always work, which is a massive, massive letdown. And when you're trying to get someone into fountain pens, the biggest downside of a fountain pen is the reliability. Not always, but most of the time that's what it's going to be. That's where a lot of people lose interest, um, either that or the maintenance. And for this to be aimed at a starter pen market, if this were my first fountain pen, and this is all I knew, I probably wouldn't want to use them just because it doesn't write most of the time. It's a little irritating. Um, if you bear down, you can get it to write, but I think both of them actually had, you know, a, a case of the baby's bottom, which is just where there's a gap um, where the tines meet and it doesn't let the ink touch the paper. So you'll see more of that in the writing sample, but that's, that's an awful, awful, awful thing to have on a beginner fountain pen. If there's anything you're wanting to get right, it's going to be, you know, nib consistent, consistency and reliability. If you don't have that, then any of the beginners that you're targeting that pen at are just going to be let down and probably aren't going to buy anything f definitely from you again, um, but probably not from the fountain pen community ever again either. All right, on to the writing sample. So first up, we have the Jin Hao Shark Pen in Gray. And again, these are both fine nibs. Now, this is the one that I've tuned a little bit, and it writes okay. Um, I still have to bear down a little bit. I'll show you here. I'll just kind of do some. You can see there's a 
a few little skips there. Nothing too bad. I've worked out most of the kinks in this one, but it, it isn't great. Um, also, this ink is um, Kara's Customs Wolf Gray. Really liking this ink so far. It's um, a very, very dark gray, which is about the only shade of gray I can tolerate. I really don't like lighter grays, so that's that's something. Um, and also, I'll show you a normal line, line with some pressure, and a reverse writing line. So you can get some line variation out of here if you really bear down. I probably wouldn't push it too much, though. It is a steel nib. And don't expect too much out of it, either. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the lavender one. And again, we're going to do fine nib. So you can see when I'm not bearing down consistently, a ton of skips there. When I do bear down, consistent writing. But if not, it's ridiculous. It's, it's unusable, to be honest. And the ink in here is Sailor... I think it's like food and musume. I have no idea. It's 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 a it's a nice sailor lavender color. <laughs> um, I actually think it matches the pen quite well, to be honest. But that's just me. But um, normal line, line with some pressure, reverse writing. So it's just it's just not consistent. And even tuned, this one still has occasional issues. But this, this lavender one, without doing anything to it, like out of the box, it's just garbage. Okay, conclusion time. Um, do I think you should buy this pen? No. <laughs> um, if you're looking for a very, very affordable pen, get something else from Jin Hao. Almost every Jin Hao pen I've ever had has wrote better. And I've tried multiples of most of them. Uh, this one I've tried multiples of, and they're just trash. Um, I don't know how else to put it. I'm not trying to be mean, but they they don't perform well. The design's nice. The idea is nice. But when it comes to putting the pen to paper, it's trash. If you're looking for a beginner fountain pen and you want something that might appeal to children, go with the Pilot Kakuno. It's a, a little bit more expensive. It's not very, very much, though. And the section's kind of sort of similar. It's triangular, but it'll still help them form that grip. And the nib is so, so much better. So much better on that pen. I would avoid these like the plague, to be honest. Um, I don't know what else to say. I'm going to try to tune this one up and work on this one a little bit more to get them writing, you know, reliably and then give them away. But I, I wouldn't, if you're not willing to put the time into it to get them to work properly, don't buy them. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you all are having a fantastic day. And if you like this, feel free to subscribe, check out my other stuff, all that. And uh, check out my Patreon as well. Anything there helps me out a ton. And hope you all have a good day. Bye. For everyone who stayed to the end, um, I do have a, a quick question while you examine some footage of the shark pens in their natural habitat. Um, I was just wondering if you all would like anything in the background, um, anything at all, whether it be maybe themed to match each pen or just something conventional, something like I used to do with ink bottles and other pens, anything like that. Um, just let me know, and I hope you all enjoy this beautiful shark footage.